And I want you to listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. What you're hearing is our bell. We want to make sure it is rung today. All across the state of Texas, the Union of Brothers Churches are ringing their bells right now. And they are doing it to be with us. They can't be with somebody, but they're with us in spirit and with sound. I want to read the scripture as the bell is ringing. It is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. Jesus read this in the synagogue. Isaiah wrote it originally. The spirit of the sovereign God is upon us because the Lord has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. We will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Stand with me, please, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would be with us today as we've met together in one accord to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for your presence. I thank you, Father, for your abiding spirit that is with us, God. Father, we want you to know that there's one motive we have today. For these next moments, we have to get over our grieving and our sorrow and look to you because you are the source of our joy. You are our oil. You are the one that heals and delivers. So, Father, I pray that as we worship you today, you will find pleasure. You will find pleasure amidst these ashes. And I pray, God, that you'll hear your church that is alive and well. Lift up our voices and worship and respect you. Father, we praise you and we welcome you to this service. We thank you for your presence that will heal us and change us forever. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. All of God's children say amen. amen. You may be seated. We're going to go into our music in just a moment. But I want to begin with some thank yous. I want to thank all of the firemen, Caldwell, Deanville, Cooks Point, that came out here and did their service to their community. I made myself hoarse going around them, telling them thank you. All of the emergency, emergency services that were out here with us, during this time that we experience. I also want to thank all the churches and the pastors. I, I cannot begin to tell you how it affected me as my phone was lit up from texts and phone calls from pastors. We have two that's here. The Mitchells are here uh, that, that had p recently pastored Cola Brethren. And then, of course, my good friend Thurman and his sweet wife, Teresa, are here from Emmanuel Fellowship. And uh, I asked him, I said, how are you being covered? He said, we started at 11. So, God bless you. you thank you so much for being with us today. I received phone calls. I received text messages. First Assembly, First Baptist, Restoration Church, Calvary Baptist, Cooks Point Brethren, Cooks Point Methodist, Emmanuel Fellowship, Galilee Baptist, Caldwell One Church, Elizabeth Lutheran, Dimebox Lutheran, First Methodist, Caldwell Brethren, Strickland Funeral Home. That's right, I said Strickland Funeral Home. All these churches, including Strickland Funeral Home, offered us their, their sanctuaries to worship in. Also, the Unity Brethren, Seton Brethren, the pastor for Seton Brethren was out here walking the grounds, praying as the flames were, were, were licking up. So we, we deeply appreciate Denise McKeska and everyone that was here for us and that, that ministered to us in our time of need. And I just want to give those thanks. Now let me say one more thing. I was out here that day that the fire began and I was picking up uh, some addresses here. I was gonna go do some visits. And uh, Bubba was outside, and he was doing some work. And Bubba stopped what he was doing and sat and talked with me for, for quite a while. And uh, soon after I left, Bubba packed up and he left. Now, when he left, he noticed something on the top of the building. 
and he saw some smoke. And I'm going to tell you, if he hadn't seen that, if Bubba had not called 911 when he did, we would not be meeting in here today. I want that perfectly clear that I consider Bubba a hero of this whole situation because he kept this building from burning down. Amen. So, so many people to thank and so many people to give thanks for. I want to read a letter uh, from just one of my good friends. This is the, the president of the Unity of the Brethren, and he sent out a, a, uh, uh, an email, a letter, and I'm going to try to read this on my phone. And this is from the Unity of the Brethren. Dr. Larry Kozlowski at Crosby Brethren Church and the president of our unity. He says, Dear friends in Christ and family of faith at New Tabor, on behalf of the unity of the brethren, we want you to know that we grieve with you over the loss of your house of worship that has stood as a, as a light of faith, hope, and love for 70 plus years. While the flames of fire may take away the physical presence of a building. Actually, it's 130 years. I think he got that half right. As, as, while the flames of fire t may take away the physical presence of a building, it cannot take away the spiritual impact that finds its resilience in the hearts of people, particular, particularly you, New Tabor Brethren. Fire is a part of our history. While Huss was burned at the stake, the light of faith and truth has lived on through the faith and trust of people in the Lord for over 600 years. God worked then and God works now in all things. There are already signs of provision and sustenance for today and the days ahead, ahead that will feed your souls. The Bible and the communion table, both scripture and holy communion in both kinds. That means in, in bread and in wine. These things... The Bible and, and the communion table, both scripture and holy communion, both kinds, has made brethren, brethren. Because we are connected with the body of Christ, when one suffers, we all suffer. I have received messages and calls of care and concern from many throughout the unity. The predominant question is, what can we do to help? We stand ready to assist you as, as you discern what needs you have. You are in our prayers this Sunday morning. And the days to come, much prayer has already been poured out for you, even as the fire was occurring. In this time of loss and in the days of rebuilding, may the Father's loving arms uphold you. May the peace of Christ abide in your hearts. And may the presence and power of the Holy Spirit bolster your resilience. In love for you, New Tabor Brethren Church, from all the unity of the brethren, Larry. I am so grateful for all the love and the concern that we have received, and we're just going to feed on that. And the message series that we are currently in, that we began last week, is entitled A New Day. It was a new day before this happened, and I think that Rhonda and Mike, they had talked to me because they're going to be doing some of the messages in this series. They said, well, we would completely understand if we change the order, and you go ahead and speak today, but... I'm not about to allow this crisis to alter our plan and alter what God has already set in motion. So Rhonda will be speaking today. Mike will be speaking next week. And I'm going to get at you the week after that. Amen. So I'm just building up. I just cannot wait. But I, I'm going to stick with it because God has spoken to all of us. And everything that he's given, uh, Rhonda, myself, and Mike, God's going to give to you. And we're going to deliver that message. So it's going to be a great day. I want to remind everybody we have food in the back that we're going to eat together. And um, we might want to order some more. I'm just, I'm just guessing. So hopefully that's in the works. Uh, but we're going to have food that we're going to eat together. I, we believe that it's important that we have communion together with each other, that we sit down and around these tables and talk and eat. So that's why we left the tables up. So I want to encourage you to just stay right where you are. After service, we'll get in line and we'll take care of that. All right. So at, at, after saying all of that, I want Brother Paul, if you'd please come. Yes. Peewees, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So, yeah, Peewee's going to make an announcement after service. I want to make sure we don't, don't forget that. Peewee's going to give an update after lunch. That's right. Okay. Of, of where we are. So if you'd like to find out uh, where we are going, uh, congregation, uh, we're going to give you some updates. Elder Board, tomorrow night, we're going to meet at 7 o'clock. All right. Paul. 
just see how great thou art. I know in the bullet it says amazing grace, but I change it. Would y'all like to stay? If you can, stand up and let's sing to the Lord. Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider
Would you please take your places? I think we have offering plates right here. There they come. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to be with us. Father, we bring our substance to you. We bring back to you a portion of what you have already given us. And God, we know that you don't need it. We need it. We need to give. We need to release the blessings that you've given us into other lives. So, Father, we just thank you for what you've given us. We return it to you for your glory. 
I pray, Father, that you would take this, use this, and multiply it as we continue to touch people in this community, to do what you've called us to do, to be a light on a hill. We love you, Father. We dedicate this offering to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us a... times in a church when it comes to installing elders you say we've taken care of business <laughs> my dad taught me a long time ago that elders in a church or if you're from a church where they're called board members it's a spiritual title an elder and when you're an elected an elder in, in this church your duties aren't to say yes and no and to represent a constituency of people that's what we humans have done to the spiritual office of elder. And it's wrong. An elder is someone, just like me, that represents the Lord. Anyone in teaching ministry, or in pastoral ministry, or as an elder in a church, we represent God himself. So we're going to install our elders today. There's three going off and three coming on. First of all, I want to thank those that are going off. Steve and Diane and Fred, what a what an excellent job and what quality people they are. I want to give my thanks to them. I've done it personally and I will do it publicly. How much I appreciate their service to the Lord and, and their wisdom and, and their leaning on God and hearing his voice. But we're bringing on three other very, very good ones. Barney Holmeyer, if you would please come. Barney, as I call your name. Cindy Jones and Pee Wee Surabit. These three offices, the, these... Pee Wee is going on as the president of, of our elder board. Now, I want to read some scriptures, and, and uh, I'm going to call the rest of the elders to come, if they would, please, in, in, in just a moment. Yeah, no, come on, come on up, come on up, come on up. There's, much, there's many scriptures when it comes to the elders in the church. The one we use often when we pray for the sick in this body James 5.14 says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. We're not talking about people saying yes and no, voting and, and, and following a constituency. This is a spiritual thing. So our elders know how to anoint people with oil and to pray for them to recover. Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 14.23, Paul said, when they had appointed elders for them in every church, with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. These elders belong to the Lord. The Levites belong to the Lord. God told the Levites in the time of Moses, he said, I am your inheritance. 
you belong to me. Titus chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 instructs us, if anyone is above reproach, these are the qualifications. The husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. It says, pay careful attention, Acts chapter 20 and 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Boy, that's heavy. What he has done for us with his own blood. And finally it says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and in teaching. It's a high call. And I appreciate those that have accepted their responsibility to serve us. I appreciate what you're doing. I thank you so much for stepping up. A lot of people tend to say, no, no, I don't want to do that. Folks, if you're, approached, if you're approached to be an elder in a church, it is a high honor. And heaven is listening to your response. Weigh it very carefully for you turn it, if you turn it down because it is something to, be, to live in that moment, to, to understand and fully appreciate that you do belong to God and you are representing him. So we're going to do as the Bible tells us. We're going to anoint these new elders with oil. We're going to ask God to be with them. Congregation, would you stand, please? You know what to do. Stretch your right hand a blessing toward these. <clears throat> the rest of elders, if you would please just join hands. Let's do it by joining hands with each other. As I anoint these with oil, we're going to pray that God's blessing, his power, and his anointing be upon them. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint and commission these men and women, Father, as they have said yes to you. And Father, they're submitting to you in all things. I pray, God, that your spirit... Your anointing power would be upon them. I pray, Father, that you would walk with them everywhere they go. Father, remind them that they are a, a testament of you. God, that people will be watching them. Lord, I pray that the discipline of the Holy Spirit will be upon them. And Father, when we meet in meetings, that they won't do what they want to do, but they will stop and consider what your will is and what will bring you joy and pleasure. I pray for the wisdom of Solomon to rest upon them. I pray, Father, that you would just guard them bless their families. I pray that you protect their property. I pray that the favor of God would rest upon them as they serve you in spirit and in truth. Father, we consecrate them. We anoint them for service, and we ask that your blessings be upon them as they serve you. We love you, Father, and thank you for this gift that you've given us in Jesus' name. Congregation, say with me, amen. 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 God bless you. Sammy, welcome. Love you. Barney, thank you, buddy. Welcome back. Welcome back. Peter Wee, welcome back, buddy. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, congregation. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if I'm right, I think Pee Wee was on the board when I came here 19 years ago, and he's finally back. I'm wondering if when he, when he, when he, he, they, they, under his leadership, they brought us in as pastor. I, I'm wondering if he didn't, I don't know. Did you regret it, buddy? You? I'm glad you're back. Barney, I'm glad you're back, too. It's been a long time, buddy. God bless you. <laughs> and Cindy, welcome. Welcome to Cindy. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. At this time, we want to ask our children, if they would please come. Children, would you please come to the front? We want to bless you. And I've got some stuff for you. Where is that? Where'd it go? Here it is. So we're going to give you some little extra because we have to make some changes. You can't leave the building. You've got to stay here. <laughs> Normally our children, after we bless them, they, they go off to Children's Church in another part of the building. There's not another part of the building. This is what we've got. Uh, I want to alert the parents. Uh, we need to talk about this tomorrow night, Pee Wee, about um, uh, a new place. We do have the Unity's... Hey, sweetie. We do have the Unity's... Um, <clears throat> building down the road which is the campground and we can probably use that confirmation uh i plan on using the what, what i call the fireplace room 
there up the main auditorium for us to have our, our confirmation class. But uh, how to get them down there, I don't know. So elders, we need to figure that out. But if, we, if the children will have somewhere for you to go, a lot better playground than we've got. So there's a lot that we're going to have for you, okay? And today, after I pray for you, I'm going to give you guys some of this. Now, I want to tell you that, that this is for after church, okay? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Don't get into it, but after church, you can have some. We love you very much. We believe in you. We know that God is going to be with you. We know he's going to protect you. We know that he loves you, and we know that he has a plan for your life, and we want you to know that. So we don't have anything to read, but I want you guys to stand. I'm going to pray. If you would stand with me, please. Our screens and projectors are gone. <laughs> so if you'd stretch your right hand a blessing out toward these children, Ron and I are going to lay hands upon them. And we're going to ask God to bless them and be with them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that you would bless these children. Lord, you told us to suffer not the little children to come unto you. For such is the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, I pray that your kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven in their hearts and lives. I pray, Father, for protection. I pray, God, that you'd guard their minds. I pray that you'd guard their bodies. I pray that you give them homes that are filled with laughter and joy. Father, I pray for your goodness and mercy to follow them all the days of their life. Father, I pray that you would just give them success in school. I pray that they would follow your commands to obey and honor their moms and dads so that their lives may be long on this earth. We thank you for them. We bless them, Father, and I ask that your favor would rest upon them. I pray that no weapon formed against them will ever prosper. We bless our children. Thank you, Father, for them. In Jesus' name, God's children say with me, amen. You may be seated, congregation. You may be seated. Oh, 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 oh. hold on, hold on. I got some fun for you. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. There you go. There we go. There you go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, don't run. Here, sweetie. There you go. Oh, she already got one. <laughs> oh, that's a future elder right there. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Here, sweetie, there you go. All right. See, she. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Thank the children for being patient with us. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. I want to introduce Rhonda. She's going to speak today. I asked her and I asked Mike to do this. Because I want you, we want you to hear from the, the preaching ministry of New Tabor. And every one of them are given something, we're all given something different by God, and we're preaching on the same subject. And if we, if we use the same scriptures, that's okay. Because I've had to read scriptures more than twice to get them, haven't you? So I want you to just open up your hearts and minds and hear from the Spirit of God. Rhonda and I have been married for 38 years. At 39 in March, yeah. And um, she was ministering long before I met her. She taught children's church when she was just a young child. She taught Sunday school and it even touched the, taught the adult Sunday school class when you were at Freeport as a teenager. And uh, so she's had this in her. God called her long before she met David Johnson. She is ordained as I, as, as I am, same, same uh, entity ordained me as ordained her and licensed her. So she is seasoned. She knows the word of God. She's pastor to church, Dime Box Brethren, and we are just so, so privileged to have her, and she's my team partner. A lot of my messages, I, I, I will ask her what she thinks about them, and she uh, helps me with them, and it's an honor. Sometimes she says, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I get a little risky sometimes, but I'm looking forward to hearing what God has, has spoken to her, so open up your hearts, your Bibles, your minds, and your spirits, and let's receive the word of God. Rhonda? Let me get my stuff out of your way. I'm always humbled to minister, but 
today especially. Um, <clears throat> And I would be perfectly comfortable for David to be doing this. So, um, And I do want to have a little disclaimer. And that is that I did not help David pick that candy for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that was all him. Uh, this series is A New Day. And I brought my prayer journal because... On the 3rd of January, I wrote out the bones of what would become this message long before we knew what was going to happen, long before we knew that we'd be in here today. And um, I just thought that was really interesting. Every human, every person on the planet, every human who has ever been born, every human who ever will be, was designed in their mother's womb, knitted by God, just to hear God's voice. We were made to hear him. People say, I've heard this all my life, all my ministry. I don't hear from God. Yes, you do. You just don't realize it's him. When you decide to do something good instead of something stupid, probably that's the Lord. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes it definitely is. And... All of us are designed to hear God's voice. And if you're a parent, you know how much instruction you've put into your children. If you ever see a parent who says, well, I'm not going to tell my kid, you know, I'm not going to give them any instruction. I'm going to let them learn on their own. Personally, I call that foolish and unloving. And God is not a better parent than I am. And the Lord is constantly wanting to pour into us and lead us and give us guidance and speak to us. The word tells us that he says, this is the way, walk in it. And he constantly wants to tell us, no, 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 not there. Come here, go there. Don't say that. That's what I hear most of the time. Don't say that. (laughs) Don't think about that. But John 644 says that no man comes to the Father except the Father draws him. The Father draws us by his voice and by his spirit. John 10:27 says, "My sheep know my voice. I know them, and they follow me." Are we his sheep? We're his sheep, we're his children. And certainly he speaks to us. The Lord's voice can be heard in a lot of different ways. Audibly, some people have heard God literally speak to them. They've heard him with their ears. Sometimes we hear God speak to us just by knowing something. We just have a knowing in our hearts. The psalm says that he speaks to us in our dreams. And we're about to read scripture where God spoke to Solomon in a dream. He leads us into truth and speaks to us by leading us. Sometimes he can tell someone to tell you something, and that's God speaking to you even though he used it from a different person. This is a note that I received when I was speaking at a conference one time. This was probably close to 10 years ago, and I just sort of came across it a few weeks ago And it's funny, I valued it when the person gave it to me. Obviously, I still have it. But a few weeks ago, this became very important to me. Ten years, I've had this. And God spoke to me through this in a very important, very, very uh, poignant way. Sometimes we feel God's presence and we think, I've heard people say this, I don't hear God, but I feel his presence. When we feel his presence, he's telling us, I'm with you. You're hearing him. That is you hearing him when you, when you feel his presence. When we, we um, of course, we hear the Lord by, by speak, reading his word and knowing his word. But we pray on Tuesday nights. And I don't feel uncomfortable saying every Tuesday night. Ken, you can help me if you remember a time. I want to say every single Tuesday night when we finish praying, David says, did you hear anything? Anybody hear anything? 
And, and we're trained to listen while we're praying and see what God is telling us and what he's leading us to do. This is a story of a family on a mountain road. A family was traveling on a mountain road when all at once their little boy in the back seat said loudly, there's a big rock in the road around the next curve. The dad who was driving was so startled by this weird outburst that he slowed down. And as they went around the curve ahead, a great boulder blocked the road. The parents were so impressed that their little guy could hear from God. So they asked him, they said, what else is he saying? And the little boy said, um, for us to stop at McDonald's at the next town. <laughs> you know, people are just like that. You know, the Apostle Peter, he heard from God and was anointed by the Holy Spirit, and then sometimes he did really dumb things. And so just because we hear from God doesn't mean we're perfect, uh, but it's important for us to know we hear from the Lord. For us to experience this new day that God is taking us into and leading us, we're going to need to listen for his voice. We're going to need to recognize him. We're going to need to be like little Samuel when Eli told him. He said, the next time you think you hear me, say this. Say, is it you, Lord? Speak because your servant's listening. And we just need to be careful to have our senses available for the Lord God Almighty to speak to us. Uh, the story of Solomon in 1 Kings 3, 5 through 12. If you have your Bible, if you'd turn there with me. It's 1 Kings 3, 5 through 12. And it's kind of a lot of scripture, but it's worth it. It says, At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God asked, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You've shown great kindness to your servant, my father David. Because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart, you, gave, you have <clears throat> continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on the throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God asked, said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never be so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be <clears throat> This scripture um, as it's translated takes on a little bit and depending on the translation that you're looking at it um, has a little different meaning Solomon asked the Lord he asked to hear the Lord the, the words, um, the word that's used in, the, in this, we, we saw here where it says to give me a discerning heart. The word is actually shama in Hebrew. Give me shama, he would have said. And shama actually means, it actually means a hearing ear. Give me a hear to ear. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> an ear to hear. And God translated that and said, you ask for an ear to hear, I'll give you wisdom. And so if we have, if we have a desire and heart to hear God and to listen for him, then the Lord will give us wisdom is what this story tells us. And we're going to need a lot of wisdom, church, in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. We're going to need to listen for the Lord's voice with a hearing ear and let him give us wisdom. And we also, the word tells us, we can ask for wisdom. And what will he do if we ask for wisdom? He's going to give it, period. That's what the word says. We need to have present tense faith. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
we need to continually hear from God. Hearing means present tense. Hearing means right now it's happening. Um, Abraham and Isaac is a great story and a great illustration of this in that God told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. Abraham made all the preparations, went up to the mountain, and was obeying what the Lord told him to do. When he got to the top of the mountain, what happened? While he was in the very act of obeying God, the father spoke to him and said, stop, and let him know that he had provided another way. Abraham heard from God, but he kept hearing. He kept listening. If Abraham had heard from God and just with iron force will just said, I'm going to obey, period, this is what I'm doing, and just shut everything out, Isaac wouldn't be part of our story today. It would have ended right there. And if you can think of the succession from there, Israel wouldn't be part of our story as it is today. And so, I, Abra, I'm sorry, Abraham didn't just hear from God, but he kept on hearing from God. He had present tense faith. It says faith comes by hearing, continually, presently, constantly. So we need to listen for the Lord. We need to listen constantly. Keep a sense and awareness of what God's saying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing comes by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. This is Jesus in print. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. And that was Jesus. And he is the word. The word is preached. And all my life I heard that faith comes by hearing the preaching of the word. And that's true, but it's not the only way. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word. We learn to hear by the word of God. And we can read the word, we can hear the word, we can hear the preaching of the word, but it comes by the word. And the word always increases our understanding, not changes what the word says. If we don't understand what God is doing or what he's telling us, that's all that means is that we don't understand. In another time in Abraham's life, God told him, he said, go to the land, I will show you. Abraham didn't understand where God was sending him. He didn't even tell him. It's easy to obey the Lord when he gives you the full plan. But when he just says, just go, all you need to do, all, all we have to go on is just to go. And if we wait until we understand to go, then we will miss what God has for us. If God says go, then we go. Our job is the same here in this building as it was before we lost our building. Our job is to love the Lord God Almighty with all our heart, mind, strength. Is to love each other, prefer one another, and respect one another. And it's to love our community and serve our community. That was our job before, and it hasn't changed. We're just going to need to do that and build a new building at the same time. And that is a big job, but God's a big God, and we don't have to be afraid. We just need to follow him step by step. And we only know what steps to take when we listen. I'm going to try to sum up this next story really fast. Ezra, in the book of Ezra, the, the temple was rebuilt. After the children of Israel had been in captivity and the temple was destroyed, they rebuilt the temple in Ezra, in Ezra's day. And after that, the walls around the city needed to be rebuilt. And for 70 years, they tried to rebuild the walls, and, and they would just fail and fail and fail. And the enemy kept winning as they would try to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah came along. Nehemiah's name means comforter, and he is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Nehemiah came along. And he led Israel to rebuild the walls of Israel. Can you know? 52 days. And what I've read that theologians take from this is that in our own strength, it takes a lifetime to do what God can do in one season. 
if we just allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and if we listen to the Lord as we go. I want us to pray together, and I want us to ask for the Lord to help us, just like Solomon. I want us to pray Solomon's prayer. Solomon said, Solomon was a grown man when, when this was written. He wasn't a child, but he told the Lord, I'm a child, because he felt so inadequate and so overwhelmed for the task of taking over the kingdom that his father had left him. He was feeling that inadequate and humbled. Yet he told the Lord, I, I just need to hear from you, Father. I just need to hear from you. That's what I ask. And today, we might feel overwhelmed. We might feel like, wow, there's so much to do. And there is. But I would like to lead us in praying Solomon's Prayer and asking for the Lord to give us a hearing ear and help us to have God's heart for our days ahead and to lead us. Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father, we just come before you as Solomon. We live in a time when we can ask you anything your word says over and over again for us to ask what we will and it will be done that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And Lord, we just ask, first of all, that everything that we do would glorify you. And we just pray the words of your servant Solomon, Lord, and we ask for you to touch us. We are humbled. We feel like little children, Lord, with a huge project in front of us, a huge, huge endeavor to accomplish. But, Father, we ask that we could hear you. We ask for a hearing ear, Lord, that you would open up our hearts to hear and know your wisdom. And we ask, Father, for you to lead us step by step, just as you led Abraham, and just as you have led us all the years of our lives so far. And Lord, we ask this so that you would be glorified, so that you would be lifted up, and so that what you purpose for the, us as a congregation would continue and be fulfilled. And we ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. I've asked Paul to sing a song that speaks of Isaiah before, as he's coming. I want to remind you that we are the church. That building, I think the last service I attended in that church was the day before it burned down. It was Tuesday, Tuesday night prayer. And I would go in there and sit by myself or, or with some, some of us that were in there and I would just begin to pray and I begin to think of the things of, of the building. That building over there didn't save one soul. Not one soul in the last 70 years that that building has been there. That building didn't baptize one person. That building didn't meet one need in this community. The source of that is you. The church, the body of Christ. And this song says that the spirit of the sovereign God is appointed us. Because he has anointed us to preach good news, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to proclaim the new day, the year of the Lord's favor. So as Paul sings this, I don't want you to just hear a song, but I want you to receive this as a commitment for us to continue doing what God has called us to do, to preach the gospel, to share the gospel, to be a light and salt in this community. Because the church didn't get hurt, the building did. You are well. God has protected you. He's kept you. And we are alive and well, and we will forge ahead. And God's going to be with us. Paul, if you'd please come at this time. Hear and receive this from the Lord. Some of you may have the words. You're welcome to sing along with me. Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Because he has anointed you to preach the news. The Spirit of the Sovereign God is upon you. Because he has anointed you to preach the news. He has sent you. Yeah. 
Stand with me, please. I'm going to bless you. And then I'm going to bless this food to the nourishing of our bodies. Before we do that, it's two minutes to 11. You know what we do at 11? And that thing's going to, our alarm's going to go off right in the middle of my prayer. So let's just ask God and give him thanks. Every day at 11, this new year, please set your alarms. Wherever you are, stop what you're doing. Fred and Connie and I were walking around the perimeter of the building out there. And 11 o'clock rung. We, the three of us stopped, joined hands, and we thanked our God for being who he is. So let's just thank him right now. Father, we offer you thanksgiving. Lord, it's not because of our condition. It's not because the building's gone. We love you because you are who you are. That everything in this earth will change. Things will pass away. Everything is going to melt with fervent heat, your word says. But God, you remain the same. And we thank you for being you. I thank you, Father, that you will never leave me nor forsake me. I thank you for the blessings that I have and the things that are waiting for me in glory, God. I thank you, Father, that you are the restorer of all things, that no matter where we are, you will settle everything in the end. So we thank you, Father. We love you. And we serve you and worship you in spirit and in truth today. We love you, Father. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Raise your right hands with me, please. I want to bless you in Jesus' name. First of all, I bless you with an ear to hear God in this new day. And as we forge together, as we forge together into this new day for our congregation, I bless you with healing and the oil of joy for mourning. I bless you with beauty instead of those ashes. I bless you with the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And as we rebuild, I bless you with the spirit of unity and the spirit of peace. I bless you with preference for your fellow laborers. And may the Lord our God walk with us as we enter an even better future than our past. In Jesus' name, I bless you. And I bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies and our fellowship for the healing of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Let's eat some chicken. Amen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start getting in line.